Hi there, Ilya Laporev here, I'm a cellist. Welcome to this new episode where I'm gonna cover study number four of my new series, Louis Feuer, Studies of the Young Cellist. If you want to watch more of this kind of content where I'm covering methods like Feuillard or in the near future, I'm gonna cover the PRT method. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in order to watch all of them and bring your cello playing to the next level. Let's dive right into it. Study number four by Feuillard. You see, there's not much going on. It's not so hard, not so complicated, not so difficult. But still, there are a couple of small details that you need to pay attention. And I'm going to explain you which ones. So, to start with, what is written up of this exercise? It's written, study for the left hand. So, what means? Study for the left hand articulation. There's another video of mine from this series that I covered, study number one, which is also for the left hand articulation. You can check it right here, it's gonna appear. So I don't lose too much time and neither I'm wasting your time by explaining about left hand articulation. But one thing that I want to tell you here, so as we see, study for the left hand. But after practicing and playing these uh, exercises and giving it to my students a couple of times, I discovered another thing. This study is not only for the left hand, but it is great also for the right hand and arm. Why is that? Because if you noticed when I was playing this, this is a great exercise, you know, to make the best sound out of your cello. So again, before we continue, I want to tell you one important thing. Of course, we do all want to have a Stradivarius, of course, we want to have the best strings, of course, we want this, we want that, we want that. But it doesn't really matter which kind of instrument you are playing. Either it is a Chinese instrument made in China, either it is a, it is a factory um, cello, it doesn't matter. But, you know, if you are developing your arms, your hands, if you are putting more weight on your cello, when you are playing the cello, then you can produce any good sound on any cello. This is a promise I give to you. So it doesn't matter, even if you have the crappiest cello, you can even, with these kind of exercises, improve your sound. So this is very important to pay attention. I also didn't start you know, my cello studies with my instrument, which is a uh, Jean-Baptiste Lefebvre from 1763. I started also with crab cellos, but it is important to start immediately, you know, to play with a full sound. I know a lot of guys that don't have the instrument they deserve, but they are producing a 
great sound. It's because it's all about the gesture. It's all about the arms. It's all about the player, the cellist, the artist itself. So anyways, this was a little thing I wanted to tell you. But now let's focus on the exercise. So a great way to produce sound and to improve your sound in a quite a short time it is to play, first of all, open strings. So this. See, so this is very important that you approach it that way. So you start with open strings before you continue with this exercise. So as you could see, it's most of it on the lower strings and on the lower strings there's nothing better you know for us to hear lower strings you know this deep sound so try to improve that first of all with open strings and by the way when you play an open string i know most of us were in a room where we we're practicing but make it sound as if you would be in a concert hall which means, of course, don't use pressure, don't get stiff. Now, it's all about freedom, liberty. So, you want to use your arm, your elbow, help with your elbow. Let me show this again. Okay, once you mastered the open strings, so with a great connection also, and when you produce this deep sound and when you're happy, then let's go to the next step. We play this exercise once through. Of course, always keeping in mind that this study is for the left hand. So the priority goes to the left hand. So important is the articulation. Can you see? So it's important to hammer. What do I mean with hammer? beat with the fingers but be careful when I say beat with the fingers don't beat stiffly not with your whole hand or arm even some people they misunderstand what I'm meaning with beating no it's like you're hammering you're taking something to put against the wall a painting and poof 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 so that movement that you're doing that you use with your fingers So it needs to be relaxed, because imagine, if you're going to hammer something very stiff like that, it's not going to really be effectful. More effectful is when it's relaxed, but strong in the meantime. So, of course, if you wish, you can start this exercise without the bow. So you put it aside and you just play the whole exercise through, only with the left hand. And you need to hear. If you hear this, then you're doing it right. If it happens that you play like this, you don't hear anything. Then it means you're doing it wrong. So really, don't be shy here. Anyways, so this is a thing that you can do before playing the exercise. Now, let's go again back from the beginning. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's quite clear, everything. It's not a difficult one. So, together what I said. So, full sound. Help with your arm, help with your elbow, and the articulation. So, let's see what's going to happen now. So, see, I produce a very deep sound. Another thing that you need to pay attention is the bow distribution. What do I mean with bow distribution? Well, easy. I'm going to show you a way what is right and another way that is wrong. So, and then afterwards you tell me or you tell for yourself what is right and what is wrong. So here we go.
was right, what was wrong. So this was the bow distribution. Bow distribution is that you need to save bowing in order, you know, to have more space in order to make a good connection. So this exercise, don't use immediately the whole bow. Use small and then in order you can give space to make a good connection with the bow. So let me show this with open strings. Let's count until four. Let's say four like one, two, three, four. Saving, so I'm doing like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So not like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In order to avoid this funny sound. So it's important that you save bowing. So this is a great way also. Or you can calculate also. So every bar, there are six notes, right? So calculate. Two, three, one, two, three. So we have six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four five, six, and so on. So this is very important because this is another way that you can improve your sound if you have a great bow distribution. Okay, in the beginning, of course, you're gonna have to think about, there are a few things that you need to focus, sound, bow distribution, left hand articulation, it's normal. If you get, if you get uh, let's say, confused, it's normal, it's part of it. But in the beginning, so focus a lot on all the things, sometimes it's difficult to manage. But then afterwards, automatically, naturally, you're going to have to master this. So it's going to be much easier and you're going to be really amazed with the results afterwards. And lastly, um, yeah, as you see the tempo, it's not very quick. I'm not really sure if the tempo I was playing it is correct. But why not put an extra challenge into it? So, see, it is quite slowly that I played. I played like... One, two, three, four, five, six, stop. One, two, three. So that's pretty slow. We can, of course, speed it up. We can maybe try to slur two bars together. So why not to do one, pam, 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 and then one bow. So shall we try? If someone of you manages it, tell me. Ah, okay, no, I got confused. Anyways, you can try this as a challenge, but it's good to speed up a little bit the tempo in order, you know, for the agility in your fingers. Because if it's too slow, the way I played, maybe it's not going to be that challenging, but still, it's very healthy for the cello technique to do in the tempo. Always play slower, then if you feel if it's too slow, speed up the tempo. 
really speed up bit by bit until you're gonna come to a fast tempo. So that was practically it for this exercise. It's not really difficult, but just pay attention on the things that I mentioned and try it, you know, but the most important is to get a deep sound and don't forget about what I said, like any cello can sound great because it's true. I see that with my students, I see that with other people, other cellists, uh, violinists, doesn't matter. So remember that. So with this, we finish the study for today, the study number four. And in a couple of days, we're gonna see each other with study number five, another great exercise. Actually, they're all great. And really, this covers everything about cello technique and you're gonna see that you're gonna improve it a lot if you do this whole book together with me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see us next time. Bye, see you.